Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to be looking at an aspect of competition policy, and that's the price regulation that can sometimes be int introduced by an industry regulator or the competition authorities. Not every price is set by the free forces of supply and demand. Oftentimes, a regulatory agency can step in and intervene in the market. And we'll have a look at some examples in a second. But for example, the European Union has capped mobile phone charges and many rail fares in the UK are heavily regulated. So we sometimes talk about price capping as a form of intervention. Price capping is when the industry regulator introduces some price capping formula for an industry. Now this is an alternative to, for example, rate of return regulation, which can sometimes happen in other countries. And that's where a utility business might be allowed to achieve a given rate of profit on capital. In the UK, over time, the industry regulators have tended to favour a price capping formula, which traditionally was called RPI minus X. And what this was, was that the over a period of time, uh, each year, the industry affected would be limited in how much it could increase its prices. So, for example, let's assume that inflation is 5% and X is 3%, then the industry could only raise their prices on average by inflation minus X, 5% minus 3%. In other words, on average, price increases were capped at 2%. The water industry is slightly different. In that sector, the price capping formula is RPI, and there was inflation, minus X plus K, where K was an allowance for the water industry to, to generate extra revenue to invest in water and sewage and to improve water quality, including, for example, beach safety standards. Another good example of price capping has come with the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, which just recently introduced a price cap on payday loans for businesses such as the Money Centre and Wonga. Here's an example of price regulation in Britain. Just under half of all UK rail fares are subject to some form of regulation. And in fact, since 2015, rail fares that are capped can only rise by the rate of retail price inflation. All the other fares are set at a commercial rate by train operating companies. And many of them, of course, use price discrimination to maximise their revenue from their passengers. So what's the case for capping an industry? What are the economic justifications for introducing some form of price capping intervention? Keep in mind, that in many of these industries, we're talking about at least a dominant firm, perhaps a near monopoly, even consider possibly a natural monopoly. In other words, a regional water monopoly, or a very powerful uh, business, has significant monopoly power and left unregulated with, with unfettered power, they could potentially raise price quite high and make what some people would regard as excessive profits at the expense of the consumer. Now, of course, what excessive profit is, is open to debate. It's almost impossible to avoid, for example, a value judgment being made. So one justification is to curtail or hold back the monopoly power of utilities. Second justification is that if you reduce the price in real terms, that's good news for household consumers, their bills come down. It's good news for businesses because their costs come down. And one could bring in concepts such as consumer surplus. So falling real prices will increase consumer surplus and help to improve living standards. One could go a little bit further and then think about the consequences of slightly lower bills and prices for low income families who struggle to make both ends meet each month. Third important point, is that if you put a price cap on a business, if they're limited to what they can charge below what they would normally charge if they were an unrestricted monopolist, then actually to make higher profits, they have to bring down their unit costs. So here's the argument, put a price cap on. If producers are able to cut their unit costs, they can still make more money. So a price cap might be 
a stimulus to productive efficiency. Fourth point applies to countries which might have, for example, an inflation problem. If you cap the price of utilities and monopolies generally, then that could bring down the rate of inflation. Although, of course, in the UK, inflation has been below the 2% target for some time now. What are the evaluative arguments against capping prices? One point is that if you cap prices and firms have to reduce their costs, this can lead to substantial, often thousands, of job losses in utilities. Uh, another argument is that different industries have different price cap formulae. And that, you could argue, distorts the working of the price mechanism. There may also be regulatory failure. The industry regulator, when setting the cap, might not have enough information about the industry. Uh, they may have been given information by the businesses themselves and set too generous a cap. Or they may have set too tight a cap and that leads to negative consequences, for example, for investment and for research and development. It's a tough ask to get the cap right. And crucially, if you cap the price too high, uh, if the cap is too strict, sorry, this is going to affect profits, which can then lead to less investment by, for example, the utility businesses. So ultimately, if you cap the price to help demand, you might end up limiting long-run supply in the industry. I'll have a look at that, uh, have a look at that in a second. Here's an example of the possible government failure from a price cap intervention. Uh, back in 2014, 2015, the Financial Conduct Authority introduced a cap on the interest that could be charged uh, to consumers by the payday lenders, the likes of the Money Shop and Wonga, amongst others. That cap was 0.8% interest per day. In theory, a well-intentioned intervention in the market. But one unintended consequence is that the market supply of payday loans will fall. Indeed, a substantial number of payday lenders have left the market. Well, what this could mean is that some vulnerable people will now turn to the shadow or the black market for their loans because they're effectively excluded from the conventional banking system. And alternatives such as credit unions run by churches, for example, are not big enough to cope with the demand for this type of loan. If people turn, their, turn to the black market for these loans, this actually potentially could make the problem of extremely high interest rates on loans much worse. So here's an example of an unintended consequence from a well-intentioned price cap. Let's turn our attention to another recent example that's topical and a useful one for economists to look at. Over the recent years, the European Union has been intervening directly to cap the cost of roaming charges for people travelling across the European Union and accessing the internet across different mobile networks. As you can see, the cap has been falling recently. Indeed, from June 2017, but not before, people travelling within the EU should be able to use their mobile internet within those European countries at no extra charge roaming charges are being abolished. And the EU has also brought down the cost of text messages. So there's been some significant attempts by the European Union Competition Commission to hold down and reduce, ultimately eliminate, roaming charges and to bring down the cost of texts. And let's see how this would work in an analysis diagram. This is where you can score great marks in an A2 micro or year two micro paper to show you really get this. Let's take, for example, a situation as shown by the diagram. Here we find the profit maximising output is Q1 and this monopoly is able to charge price P1 well above the unit cost C1 and they can make a high supernormal profit. Now, for a price cap to work, it has to be set below the normal free market monopoly equilibrium. So let me put in a capped price, which I've put in, as you can see, slightly below. And if the price goes down, we'd expect more consumers to be brought into the market. So demand expands to Q2. It's not a profit maximizing price now because the price is being capped. 
Let me put in the cost now, that higher output. That's the cost is C2. And you should be able to see now that the supernormal profit is lower than it was before. I'll just run through that with you one more time. There was the profit before the cap. There's the profit after the cap. So price capping is a way of reducing monopoly profits. Now, to be effective, the cap must be set below what would be the normal profit maximizing price. What the cap does is it brings down the profit made by a dominant firm in the market. In theory, and one would hope, that the cap then will stimulate attempts by businesses to improve their cost efficiency. And that will improve productive efficiency. And because the price is now closer to marginal cost, it should lead to enhanced allocative efficiency and better consumer welfare. However, it may also lead to the exit of some businesses from the industry, which then reduces competition. Many, for example, many telecoms firms have very deep pockets and they'll be able to cope with a, with a cap on the price. Smaller firms may not be able to do that. So just to provide an overview of this, price capping is when the regulator decides to introduce a maximum price. Now clearly there's an element of value judgment here, in particular just how low should that cap be. The benefits of the cap are that the regulator is acting, if you like, as a surrogate competitor where no competition currently exists. If the cap is effective, it holds prices down and there's a gain in consumer welfare. And there should be an incentive for businesses to lower their unit costs in order to improve their profits. However, a price cap lowers the return on capital. So that means that businesses have less money available to invest. A cap may also have the unintended consequence of dissuading some possible new entrants into the market. So effectively, a price cap could actually make a market less contestable. And of course, a telecoms firm, for example, might decide to raise their prices in other ways. If they're capped in terms of text charges and roaming charges, they may increase the price of handsets. Or they may try and lock consumers into longer term contracts on their mobile phones. Again, that will be an unintended consequence of this intervention. The key to evaluating, of course, is to think about alternatives to a price cap. This takes you into some very interesting areas. So, for example, how else could the industry regulator open up the market to try to bring, de bring in new firms? Could the regulator, instead of taxing, uh, sorry, instead of capping the monopoly, maybe they should, the government should just avoid a cap let the monopoly price as they want, but impose a windfall tax on monopoly profits, which could then go to help consumers. So there are, cons there are alternatives to having a price cap in the market. So there we go. If you stayed all the way through that, congratulations. We've just been looking at the effect of price regulation, price capping in some of those big utility industries, such as payday loans, water monopolies, and telecoms. It's an important area in year two micro, so it's well worth keeping up to date with. Catch some more videos on our YouTube channel, of course, and on the Tutor2 website. But for now, thank you.